Hi, my name is Luke Johnson and I'm a chemist here at Hot Company in Loveland, Colorado. Today I'm going to show you how to perform our new ultra low range total iron method. Uh, this method is for ultra pure water. Uh, we're looking for both particulate and dissolved iron. The first thing we want to do before we do anything at, uh, with this test is to clean our glassware. Uh, there are a number of steps for cleaning the glassware and we're going to start by cleaning these digestion vials. So first thing you want to do is get some good clean water. If you don't have a, a source of this water in your, in your own lab, you can purchase deionized water from Hawk. You want to rinse out your vials with this well, followed by a rinse and soak of six normal hydrochloric acid, which you can also purchase from Hawk. And finally, um, you want to soak in a combination solution of Rover, also available from Hawk, and EDTA disodium salt also available from Hawk. Five grams of each of these per liter in a nice warm water bath. Once you have your vials clean, um, you're going to want to mark the 15 milliliter mark on each vial. So what I did is I pipetted 15 milliliters into this vial and then I, I made a mark here at the bottom of the meniscus so I knew exactly where that volume was. This is going to help you in taking your samples in the future because you don't want to, t uh, to generally be using a pipette to fill your vials. The reason for that is that iron contamination is a serious issue and this method will not work if you contaminate uh, your glassware um, or your workspace with iron of any kind and iron is ubiquitous, it's in everything. Uh, in your paper towels, in your pipette tips, um, well, it's everywhere. So you have to make sure uh, that you're very fastidious about keeping everything clean. So um, when you're taking a sample, ideally you want one of the advantages of this method is that you can take your sample directly into this vial. This avoids the risk of um, contaminating your sample uh, through the uh, sample container. For instance, if you went to your sample tap and you took your sample into a plastic bottle, um, you could get contamination of your sample from the bottle itself, from the lid of the bottle, um, and this uh, sampling directly into your vial avoids that risk. In addition, um, iron will stick to the inside of your, of your sample bottle, so if you take a sample directly into this, you're gonna, you will potentially lose iron to the sample bottle and your, your result uh, consequentially will, will not be accurate. And finally, because particulate iron is a heterogeneous contaminant, getting a representative sample out of this and into here is nearly impossible without um, vigorous overhead stirring, shaking, and uh, even at that point, you're not getting a really perfect sample of what was actually coming out of your sample tab. So it's highly recommended that you mark your, mark your vial and take your sample directly into your vial. Similar to this, uh, you wouldn't be sampling out of your tap, but if this is your sample tap, you just sample to the mark here, 15 mil mark, and now you're ready to start your analysis. This procedure uses um, where is that? ferrazine reagent, Hawk ferrazine reagent for both the digestion and the determination of iron. Uh, ferrazine will turn purple in the presence of iron and um, you can use that as a handy indicator anytime you suspect there might be contamination. If you see purple spots or purple crust or whatever, you have iron contamination. So um, one of the things that I do and that you should definitely do to make sure that you um, are not adding contamination to your sample is to take your bulk ferrazine bottle and transfer some ferrazine into a small uh, dropper bottle like this. Um, this, these, this bottle is referenced in the method and you can order that from Hawk. Um, so what I've done is I rinsed this out with DI water and then I open this, this bottle and just decanted the uh, top portion into here and I will, I will transfer the ferrazine directly out of this bottle 
into the sample vials uh, in order to avoid contamination from the bulk bottle. I don't know if you can see it here, but if you've worked with ferrazine before, there's a purple crust around the top of this bottle, and that contamination is not going to fly with this method. Any, any little crust or drop of this getting into one of your sample vials is going to totally throw off your, uh, your analysis. So we avoid that by decanting into one of these guys and using this for the ferrazine transfer. So the next thing I'm going to do on this, on this sample here is add 10 drops from this bottle of the ferrazine reagent right in here. I'm going to cap it up, invert it a couple times to make sure it's well mixed. I'm going to take a paper towel and make sure that the outside of the, the vial is dry. And then I'm going to digest it in the DRB 200 block here at 150 degrees for 30 minutes. So I created a little profile on here. Um, I call it FE for iron. Uh, set the temperature 150 the timer will go off in 30 minutes. You just drop it in here, close the lid, and hit start. So while your sample's digesting, now is a good time to get your spectrophotometer set up. Um, we have two methods that use this, uh, this chemistry, method 268 and 269. If you're using the 10 centimeter cell, you'll need to assemble this adapter for the 10 centimeter cell, and this will fit down into your DR6000. It's vitally important that you make sure that these two screws are tight, as tight as possible, as tight as you can get them, um, because any movement of this platform during the measurement will uh, cause a significant deviance in your, uh, or deviation, I should say, in your result. So make sure these are snug, and then you're going to fit this piece right down into the spec. You want to make sure that it's set firmly in the spec as well and that it doesn't wiggle in there because you'll get the same kind of, uh, same kind of issues. This is a, a glass 10 centimeter cell and uh, you probably can't see this on the video but there's a little tiny clear G at one end. If you have a quartz cell there will be a little tiny black or, or clear Q on that end. Uh, this is important because you need to know uh, which end you're facing in which direction in the cell compartment. You always want to make sure that the, that the cell is facing the same direction and not only that but um, let me pull this back out so you can see there's a small amount of wiggle room in this adapter that makes it uh, so that you can actually pull the cell in and out. Um, probably can't see this either but the cell can slide one direction or the other within this adapter you, want to, you have to make sure that the cell is always facing the same direction and always pushed up against the same side of the adapter for every measurement. Otherwise, you will not get a consistent result. So now that we have our blank, our digested blank here, it's cooled down to the touch. No, no longer 150 degrees C, obviously. Um, we'll take this. Actually, let me make a point here that I'm doing all of this work in the hood because ferrazine and its uh, thermal degradation products are noxious and toxic and you don't want to be breathing this in the lab. So uh, the spec, uh, the s w any, anytime you're going to open your ferrazine, you want to do it in the hood, especially after it's been digested. So back to this. I'm, I'm opening the vial in the hood. I'm going to transfer it carefully into the 10 centimeter cell. I'm going to make sure that there are no bubbles in the path there. Um, I've already wiped both windows of this cell to make sure that there are no smudges. I'm going to place this in the spec, making sure that it's aligned in the proper direction. Close the lid and I will zero on this as my blank. You want to zero on uh, water that you know is clean. So if you don't have, as I said before, if you don't have a source of that, you can purchase that from Hawk. After I've zeroed, I'm going to take this out and transfer this into a, a waste bottle again in the hood.
and get ready to run my next sample in the exact same cell. You have to use the same cell in the same um, alignment every single time to get good results. This method can also be performed using the flow through cell. Here I have it hooked up to the pour through apparatus. You can also use this with our sipper. Um, there are a couple things you want to make sure that you do in order to get good results when you're using the pour through cell. First, you want to cut the inlet line here as short as possible. This will make sure that you have adequate volume for flushing out the cell uh, because we're only using a 15 mil sample rather than the standard 25 that Huck uh, has historically used. So you want to make sure that this line is as short as possible. You also want to make sure that you don't have bubbles inside the sample cell because bubbles will, um, will give you a false reading. You can try and rinse bubbles out with DI water if that doesn't work. Um, a good way of, of removing those is to just rinse the, the funnel down through the cell with isopropyl alcohol. Um, and because it's miscible with water, um, once the IPA removes the bubbles, you can rinse the cell and, um, and the funnel with water, and then you'll have a nice bubble-free cell. The other critical por point about using the, uh, the pour-through cell is it, it needs to be absolutely firmly placed in your spectrophotometer. Uh, you can't be bumping the cell at all like this during analysis or you will get um, wildly inaccurate results. This isn't uh, such a big problem if you're using it with the DR6000 because the DR6000 has a closed lid uh, during analysis so it's uh, pretty much impossible to actually wiggle this cell. But if you're using it with a DR3900 that has an open top, you'll need to take extra care to make sure that you don't bump this, uh, bump this cell. If you do happen to bump the cell, you should re-blank, uh, re-zero re -zero the spectrophotometer, and then continue with your analysis. A couple more quick tips that uh, can help you with, with this analysis. I have dedicated this, uh, this vial as vial number one as my blank vial, and I highly recommend that you do this with at least one of your vials and all of your glassware that you use for this method needs to be dedicated for this method and at least one of them should be dedicated as a blank so that you know um, that this this vial has not been contaminated with a high concentration uh, sample. If you would like to do a QC check um, you can purchase iron standard uh, one part per million iron standard and dilute it down either in the vial directly, uh, this is described in the method, or you can make a, uh, a separate standard as I've done here, also described in the method. If you choose to make your standard in a bottle, it's critical that you acidify uh, your, uh, your standard to prevent it, the iron from sticking to the bottle. Uh, that's also described in the method, but uh, it's critical that you do that, otherwise your standard will not actually be the concentration that you think it is. And that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. If you would like a copy of this method, you can find it at hawk.com power.